Something that's very different this pro motocross season um, is we're seeing a lot more riders starting to lift weights. There's like this new fitness craze or wave of different ways of training that I, I, I feel like is starting to come through pro motocross. So like we see Ken Roxon's posted a lot of stuff with him lifting weights and doing weight training over recent years. Um, if you have a look at the physique of Chase Sexton compared to where it was a few years back, he's put on a lot more muscle mass, he's a lot bigger, and obviously did quite well at the opening round of the pro motocross. Um, if you look at Jet Lawrence and you've seen photos of him with no shirt on, um, although he's relatively uh, lean and on the smaller side, still has a reasonable amount of muscle on him in comparison to what we've seen in previous years, previous seasons with guys being very, very skinny. Um, and we've also seen something else come up where... I feel like in recent years, we've seen champions and people win championships and do well that haven't been able to maintain that and keep that going. So um, like riders that I've got here, like Cooper Webb with the Supercross, um, even Ken Roxon as well. Um, we've seen. I feel like we've seen more riders that have been at the top of the sport that have not been able to maintain staying at the top of the sport as much as what we were able to see before. Like we saw Chad Reed, James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael, they were at the top consistently for a lengthy period of time, whereas now we're seeing a lot more guys at the top. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, my name's Andrew Hammer, struggled with racing fitness for 14 seasons of racing. So um, this is more of just a, a news video or my thoughts more so than fitness. Um, so these are, these are three things I feel that we'll see that will be a little bit different um, over these coming years. I guess a, a change in the sport or a shift in the way riders approach their training and approach just riding and racing in general. Um, I think the first thing is I think a lot of riders will prioritize weight training and strength training more so over cycling and long distance cardio. I feel like that's getting phased out of racing to a degree or starting to be phased out. Um, it happened in the NBA in the 90s. Um, NBA or uh, basketball players were dead against lifting weights and doing weight training because they thought that it would put their jump shot off and they wouldn't be able to um, get their hit their baskets as well as um, uh, if they had more muscle mass. So they didn't do weight training. And then Michael Jordan started doing weight training and that kind of shifted into changing the way uh, people approach their training for basketball. Um, and now you see all basketballers uh, lifting weights. And I feel like that's kind of what Ricky Carmichael did for racing is he turned it from like a more of a, a hobby and a bogan sport to um, like athletes, okay? Turning from just a whole bunch of people riding motorbikes to treating the sport like athletes, working on his nutrition, working on his strength training. And I feel like we're going to see another shift in that um, as we keep going through these coming years. And I feel like one of those shifts is the cycling. I feel like cycling has been overdone for too long and there hasn't been enough of a prioritization on lifting weights and getting riders strong. Um, and I feel like we're starting to see that and it's starting to, to come through a little bit more. Second thing, I feel like riders are going to focus more on longevity over volume of training. I feel like we've kind of gone through this wave over recent years where volume of training has been the thing. It's been just do lots of training, do lots of cycling, do heaps of stuff for hours, and that's how you get fit for riding. And I think I think maybe, you know, like maybe five, ten years back, I feel like you could have got away with that, right? Like I feel like you can get away with doing all that training because the racing wasn't as demanding. Um, and I mean that because there just wasn't as many races. We didn't have as big as seasons or as long as seasons or seasons that are like supercross and motocross back to back as close as what they have been. That's something that's kind of been built over time. So before you could get away with doing lots of training because you didn't do as much travel, you didn't do as much racing, it was easier to recover and cope with everything. Whereas now riders have to be a lot smarter. Like I think we had three weeks, I think it was, between the last round of supercross and the first round of motocross. Like, when you're racing every weekend, they've pretty much almost done 17 like supercross races around America back to back. Okay, I think there was one, maybe one or two breaks in there, right? But I think about all the travel, all the racing, all the nerves, all the stress, the performance anxiety, everything else that goes into racing. And then you've got three weeks. So it's not really a recovery for three weeks. It's like, oh shit, now we've got to hurry up and be under the pump again to get ready for motocross. And then we've got another 12 rounds of motocross that are coming. So I feel like before riders could get away with not being as smart or, or strategic with their training, they could just get away with volume. But now they can't get away with volume because there's so much riding and so much racing, they need to be more strategic about how they approach their training and having more of an emphasis on recovery and doing the right things with their time off or time between races rather than just doing a whole lot of stuff and then hoping that they hit the spot and they're doing the right thing. Um, and, 
And this comes into the this comes into the third thing, which is uh, kind of touches on number two, which is just riders being more intentional about what they do. I feel like over recent years we hear a lot more riders coming out or speaking out about being burnt out. Whereas we never really heard, like you go back to 2000s, you know, 2010, you never heard riders being burnt out. You had like Ricky Carmichael dominating and killing it and Chad Reed up the front and Stuart up the front. Whereas now you hear a lot of guys talking more about being burnt out and you also see a lot of champions or a lot of guys that are at the top not staying at the top for as long and either retiring or um, just not performing at that level and then dropping off. Um, so we've had like you know guys like Jason Anderson who won the Supercross and then disappeared for a bit. Cooper Webb won the Supercross and then disappeared for a bit and then won the Supercross and then didn't win a race for a whole season. Um, guys like Ken Roxon who have um, done really well, who have you know been at the top for certain periods of time and then they just drop off and struggling for top tens. It's like um, Ryan Dungey doing really well and then retiring, or the same with Villapoto doing really really well and then retiring from racing and then obviously Dungey coming back for this season. Um, and I feel like the thing, I feel like a thing for a lot of them that I feel like the progression of the sport is going to come from those riders being burnt out. And because when they look back at their riding, like I was just doing too much and I was riding all the time and training all the time and it just sucked the enjoyment out of riding and racing. Um, and I think that's gonna, I think that's gonna cause a big shift in how riders train and approach their training and racing. People are gonna be a lot more, riders are gonna be a lot more methodical a lot more strategic about how they train and the races they do and the series that are important for them. And instead of just going, I need to do more, 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 now riders are being forced to look at their training in a different way and go, hey, doing more, more, more is not actually making me better anymore. It's actually making me worse. So instead of focusing on doing more, I gotta focus on being better. And if they're focusing on being better, they've got to approach their training, their riding, their racing from a different perspective, a different way, a different angle. That means using different strategies. And I feel like strength training is one of those things. I feel like a lot of riders miss, a lot of focus, riders are stuck in this, this cardio, cardio train, which has been brought through our sport for a long period of time. And I feel like one of those shifts that's going to help guys to stop burning out, to be able to do less training and get better results is getting them stronger. If they can get themselves stronger and put more of an emphasis on that, they can, number one, prevent a lot of injuries from having more muscle and supporting their joints and being able to have better longevity that way. But also, too, from performance, if they can get themselves stronger, they can make the bike feel lighter. If they can make the bike feel lighter, they use less energy. If they can use less energy while they're riding the bike, then they're going to be able to ride harder for longer periods of time. And the great thing about strength training is you can build strength really well with within half an hour, three times a week. Whereas to get the benefits of cycling, you've got to be cycling for hours and hours and hours. Um, and from my point of view, I feel like the strength training is way better than doing um, doing three half an hour blocks of strength training a week is 10 times better than doing two, three hours of cycling multiple times a week um, from an injury point of view and from a performance point of view. Um, but anyway, they're my thoughts. Um, peace out.